Hello, my name is Alexander Bochevsky. I will tell you how you can scale up graph neural networks to graphs with millions of nodes using approximate page rank. This is joint work with Johannes Klitzperer and colleagues at TU Munich and Google. Our motivation for scaling up graph neural networks in particular is because they've proven to be quite effective at solving a variety of network mining tasks, and they tend to outperform classical methods. Even though they are powerful, a big drawback of GNNs is their lack of scalability, especially as the graph sizes grow into the millions. Of course, we are not the first to tackle this problem, but existing approaches are still too expensive in practice. So where does the main scalability bottleneck come from? A large fraction of GNN models rely on a message passing procedure. This procedure is recursive and results in a neighborhood explosion since the size of the neighborhood required to obtain the prediction for a given node grows with each layer. More specifically, in message passing GNNs, to compute the hidden representation for a given node, we need to aggregate information from its neighbors at every layer. The neighbors, in turn, have to aggregate messages from their own neighbors, and so on. For example, to compute the prediction for the central node shown in blue, we aggregate messages from its first hop neighbors. They, in turn, aggregate messages from their own neighbors. Since the genome usually has multiple layers, continuing this process, the neighborhood grows and grows until soon we've covered a large fraction of the dataset. This is especially true on real networks with a small world property and makes batching for GPUs very difficult. So how do we circumvent this neighborhood explosion? Previous works proposed different sampling schemes to reduce the size of the neighborhood during training. As we will see later in the experiments, this is not the best strategy. Instead, we notice that only very few neighbors are actually important for the final prediction. The main question is how to efficiently find them. It is crucial to find these important nodes a priori, since calculating them during training is far too expensive. Moreover, we need to carefully weigh the contributions of these nodes to obtain good predictions. Specifically, we propose to find and weigh the most important nodes by their personalized page rank scores, which can be pre-computed based solely on the graph structure. So what are these personalized page rank scores? Imagine a random walker that follows edges uniformly at random with probability 1 minus alpha and teleports back to a specific node with probability alpha. The relative frequency with which we visit each of the nodes in this infinite random walk gives us the personalized page rank scores. From the definition, we can see that the teleport probability alpha controls the amount of information we are incorporating from the neighborhood of a node. Namely, for values of alpha close to 1, the random walk teleports to the node more often and we therefore place more importance on the immediate neighborhood of the node. As the value of alpha decreases to zero, we instead give more importance to the extended neighborhood of the node. So how exactly do we use these page rank scores? We build upon our earlier work, where we introduced the PPMP model, which replaces the message passing scheme with a predict then propagate scheme. Given an input graph, in the predict phase, we generate predictions for each node individually using only that node's own features. And in the propagate phase, the individual logits are diffused with page rank to incorporate the graph information in a single non-recursive step. Here, we are free to choose any architecture, from a simple MLP to CNNs if the node features are images, or RNNs if the node features are text data. A big advantage of this design is that the architecture of the neural network is decoupled from the propagation. This is in contrast to message passing GNNs, where in order to incorporate information for a larger neighborhood, we have to add additional layers. Specifically, we learn a function f that maps the node features xj to logits hj individually for each node. Once all the logits hj for all nodes have been obtained, the final predictions for a given node i are a simple weighted combination of the logits of all other nodes, where the weights are determined by the personalized page rank scores for that node. The main idea behind PPR Go is to approximate the entire vector pi of page rank scores with a sparse vector which contains only the k largest scores, which correspond to the k most important nodes. 
This is a good idea, because for real-world networks, the page rank vectors are localized, which means most of the large scores are concentrated on just a few nodes, while the rest of the nodes have scores close to zero. We propose two strategies for computing page rank, depending on whether we are doing training or inference. For training, we pre-compute the approximate sparse PPR vectors only for the labeled nodes and perform a single diffusion step in the propagate phase. During inference, it becomes too expensive to compute approximate page rank vectors for all nodes, so instead we run a few power iteration steps. Additionally, we propose a sparse inference procedure for further runtime reduction. We use an optimized variant of the anderson chung lang algorithm for approximating personalized page rank vectors. This algorithm is purely local, so its runtime only scales with the training set size. It is also highly parallelizable, which means we can further accelerate the computation in the distributed setting. As a result, it directly returns the scores of only the relevant nodes, which are exactly the ones needed for PPR Go. For inference, instead of directly computing the predictions, which requires an expensive matrix inverse, we run a few steps of power iteration. This performs well in practice. Additionally, we propose pass inference, where instead of computing the forward pass for all nodes to obtain all logits hj, we randomly sample a small fraction of nodes and insert zeros for the remaining nodes. As we will see, this significantly reduces the runtime, especially for architectures where the forward pass is expensive, while maintaining good accuracy. To summarize, First, we pre-compute the sparse personalized page rank vectors with ACL's algorithm only for the training nodes. Then, we use these to train the function f, mapping features to logits. Finally, during inference, we run a variant of power iteration to obtain the predictions for all nodes. Importantly, all of these components can be implemented in a large-scale distributed setup. We evaluate PPR Go on the semi-supervised node classification task. We are given labels for a few nodes, and we want to predict the labels for the remaining nodes. We are interested in the sparsely labeled scenario, where we have a very small number of labeled nodes, since often it's very expensive to obtain ground truth labels. Specifically, we train our models with 20 labeled nodes per class on average. We also introduce a new large-scale benchmark dataset by combining the Microsoft Academic Graph with ground truth class labels from Google Scholar. On this dataset, we use only 160 training nodes out of 12,4 million nodes in total. Importantly, unlike previous work, we evaluate the runtime of the entire pipeline, including pre-processing, training, and inference time. In industry settings, inference time is especially important, and it is usually not reported in papers. Another important aspect we wanted to evaluate is how much do different models benefit from using additional computation. Specifically, we showed a relative speed compared to a two-hop GNN model using a single worker machine. We see that PPR Go utilizes the additional workers the most, and has the highest relative speed. In comparison, both the 2-hop GNN model and the recently proposed fast GCN model lag behind. Similarly, we wanted to investigate how the size of the neighborhood used to compute predictions affects the runtime. Here, we compare PPR Go with a 2-hop and a 3-hop GNN model, which are configured to use the same number of nodes in total. For example, if k equals 30, PPR Go uses all 30 nodes at once in the propagate phase, the 2-hop GCN randomly samples 15 nodes in the first layer and 15 nodes in the second layer, and the 3-hop model uses 10 randomly sampled nodes per layer. We see that even though each model uses the same number of neighbors, PPR Go has the highest relative speed since it avoids the recursive message passing. All models achieve comparable accuracy. Besides evaluation in the distributed setting, we also evaluate the performance of PPR Go on a single machine. Unlike previous works, which mostly report training time and almost never report inference time, we are interested in a complete breakdown. In particular, fast inference is often most important in practice and may even be subject to real-time constraints. 
We compare to two other recent scalable methods, SGC and cluster GCN on the Reddit dataset. First, we see that the overall runtime of PPA Go is significantly smaller at less than 17 seconds compared to over 2000 seconds for cluster GCN and over 7000 seconds for SGC. While SGC is fast to train and has relatively low preprocessing time, it is painfully slow during inference. Cluster GCN, on the other hand, shows fast inference but slow preprocessing time. PPR Go is faster for each step and faster overall. We also investigate the memory usage and PPR Go uses the least amount of memory. All this while having the highest accuracy. Note that previous works benchmark the Reddit dataset using 65% labeled nodes, which is unrealistic in practice. Instead, we use only 820 training nodes, which is less than half a percent. Evaluating the time, memory and accuracy for different datasets, we see that PPR Go is always the fastest and has comparable accuracy. Notably, on the newly introduced Max Kohler dataset, both cluster GCN and SGC failed to finish in less than 24 hours, while PPR Go has an overall runtime of less than 2 minutes. All of this on a single machine. That is, we can train from scratch and obtain all predictions for all 12,4 million nodes in less than 2 minutes on a single machine. We also investigate the trade-off between speed and accuracy, which we can achieve by changing two key hyperparameters. Epsilon controls how good is the approximation of the page rank vectors, and K controls the number of neighbors we use. As expected, a lower epsilon, which means better approximation, and a higher k, which means using more neighbors, leads to better accuracy, and at the same time increases the computational complexity. This allows us to select the trade-off we need for different applications. For example, there is a 10 percentage points increase in accuracy from the bottom left corner to the top right corner for a price of roughly doubled runtime. Finally, we evaluate our sparse inference scheme. We see that by reducing the fraction of logits for which we compute the forward pass, note the logarithmic axis, we can significantly reduce runtime while maintaining high accuracy. In summary, our PPI Go model utilizes distributed training significantly better than the baselines. On a single machine, it has less than 2 minutes total runtime, including training and inference for a graph of 12 million nodes. The speedup comes at no cost to accuracy. For more information, check out our paper, code and additional material at the project webpage. Feel free to contact us if you have any questions. Thank you.